once again, I'll refer to the uh, Lavrov speech at UNGA. Uh, he discussed humanitarian crises as well, specifically in Palestine. Uh, what do you think, how Russia could play its positive role in the, in, in the betterment of situation in, uh, in Palestine, Gaza? Right now, we are seeing multiple thousands of killings uh, in there. We heard news of ceasefire as well, but the killings on ground ground are still carrying. So what's Russia's role in that? We, we are calling for an immediate and complete ceasefire in, in the Palestinian-Israeli conflict zone, which has already expanded mm. to the territories of Lebanon and Syria. Uh, uh, the unhindered delivery of humanitarian assistance mm. to the civilian population and the creation of conditions for the resumption of the peace process. There is no doubt that the Israel-Palestinian conflict, uh, which continues to claim the lives of thousands of innocent Palestinians in uh, Gaza, must end. And we urge all parties to uh, exercise restraint and prevent further uncontrolled spirals of violence. We adhere strictly to the provisions of the core UN Security Council and General Assembly resolutions on both the Palestinian issues, issue and the status of the occupied territories in <coughs> Lebanon and Syria. And uh, in this regard, I would like to reiterate that we support the fulfillment of the legitimate aspirations of the Palestinians to establish their own independent state of Palestine within the 1967 borders uh, with uh, East Jerusalem as its capital, living side by side in peace and security with Israel, as well as the granting of Palestine the status of a full member of the United Nations. Uh, Excellency, also Pakistan recently held uh, a huge event of Shanghai Cooperation Organization in Pakistan and we saw uh, a very uh, star shining representation of Russia in SEO. How did you feel that uh, what was the exact uh, outcome of SEO and was Pakistan able to um, show it to the world that Pakistan was able to hold such mega event in Pakistan? Exactly. Uh, that was Afghanistan uh, did successfully. And I would like to congratulate your country and your government with this uh, historical event. Uh, it is really uh, remarkable uh, uh, for the first time in its history, Pakistan uh, hosted the event of uh, such a level and uh, gathered together uh, more than 10 heads of governments of uh, regional states. As you know, uh, now is Russian's uh, turn to, to host uh, uh, these heads yes, of exactly. government's council uh, in 2025. meeting in, in 2025. And it will be uh, very difficult for us to to uh, arrange it uh, better than it was arranged uh, this year in, in Islamabad. That's, that's a compliment for me <laughs> as a Pakistani, but obviously we'll be looking forward for an invitation from you to the Pakistani journalists as well to cover this huge event in Moscow, and we are looking forward to it. Uh, another question related to the multilateral forums. Pakistan is eager to uh, see its seat at BRICS. And uh, I remember the, when the Excellency uh, Overshook was visiting Islamabad, it was my question uh, from him that uh, uh, Pakistan is uh, eager to have its uh, seat at BRICS. So what is Russia's support? What exactly we can look forward to Russia to have its support in uh, bringing Pakistan as member of BRICS? So what's your take on that? Uh, BRICS is another... Uh uh, not organization, formally speaking, but uh, the group of yes. countries. Uh, another example uh, to uh, in one row with SEO, where uh, which can uh, prove uh, hmm. how uh, the countries, truly independent countries, independent from Western pressure can cooperate with each other for the, for the benefits of the, uh, for the uh, national interests and for the interests of the people. 
And uh, as you know, uh, this year Russia was uh, chairing uh, the BRICS mm -hmm. and uh, this uh, Kazan uh, summit, uh, the summit in the capital of our Tatarstan region, uh, uh, the city of Kazan, uh, was uh, quite a success. And uh, uh, Russia uh, uh, welcomed and we are welcoming the interest of Pakistan to join this uh, uh, to join this group. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, uh, one of the members, very well known for you, uh, was uh, uh, against uh, uh, invitation uh, of Pakistan to that summit. And because of uh, the procedures, uh, if one is objecting, it's not a consensus, not and th that is why it wasn't uh, uh, become true f for your country this time. But uh, we believe that uh, uh, very soon it, 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 it can be possible for your country to join. That, that, that's, that's a very comprehensive response to uh, my question about BRICS. Uh, Excellency, uh, there is another question about NATO. Let's discuss its role as well, because we see Russia speaking time and again about NATO's uh, increasing role in the region, its impact in the region, uh, its implication in the region. So uh, what is your view? Uh, does Russia think that there should be another uh, they should be alternative to NATO's presence in the region? Or uh, what exactly is going on in, in, in Russia's mind, if, we are, if I ask you about, about, about thank NATO's you, role? Thank you for this question. I think that uh, Russia's <coughs> approach to the NATO is very well known, but nevertheless, I would like to stress that uh, the former Yugoslavia, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Libya, all these countries have suffered from the brutality of a so-called defensive alliance, as NATO likes to call itself. Today, we see the growing militarization of the Asia-Pacific region. The US-led Quad and AUKUS blocs contribute to the global instability. And uh, frankly speaking, and, uh, that are the evidences that uh, the entire system of Euro-Atlantic security exactly. is crumbling before our eyes. And uh, uh, President, uh, Russian President Putin made it clear during his uh, speech uh, in June this year. This system uh, must be rebuilt. And do, to achieve this, uh, we've launched an initiative to create an inclusive architecture of equal and indivisible security in Eurasia, open to all states and organizations of our common continent, which are ready to cooperate in the search for universally acceptable solutions, using the independence and natural competitive advantages of the uni united Eurasian space. And uh, that Russian proposal was uh, uh, in principle uh, supported by uh, Chinese side and uh, as it aligns with the basic principles of the Chinese Global Security Initiative. And uh, it, it is crucial to uh, recognize that the future security architecture should be open to all Eurasian countries that wish to participate in this creation. And for all, it includes European, European, Asian, and even NATO countries as well. 